So in the name of Jesus, God, we love you. God, you're just blowing my mind all the time, all the time. And I just sit back and I just think about the way that you've moved and the miracles and, and deliverances and healings and freedom and, and vision and passion and just the way that you are moving on my heart, the way that you're moving on, on uh, in, in my wife and my family and the people here. God, what an incredible hour to be alive. Lord, I just thank you, God. We just, just, just lift your hands to God. Just tell him thank you for everything that he's doing. What an amazing season. Lord, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your love. We thank you, God, for how you move in our lives. Lord, we thank you, God, and we're expecting more. I pray, God, that we would pull on you like we never have in our lives, Lord, because there is more. There's more power and freedom and life and anointing and vision. There's more, God. Just like Amy was praying about finances, and, and there's more, God. I pray just breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough and we oppose every strategy of the enemy get off I rebuke you now in Jesus name you're done we just thank you God for what you're doing we bless you and everybody who's just full of the fire of God shouted amen amen, amen. all right good so I got my little new gizmo here I want I've got tired of carrying this thing and I saw someone using that, and I'm like, I've got to get one of those. And so thank, thank, I, I say thanks to uh, Amazon, and Amazon came through for me. Uh, and so that sounded sacrilegious. They thought I, you thought I was going to thank Jesus. Well, thank you, Jesus, and then uh, for using Amazon. Okay, and so I wanna, I'm going to, we're in this uh, really short, probably uh, a two-week series. And oh, by the way, by the way, next week, the plan is to have a little bit of a, a, a unique message where I'm going to talk about um, how to deal with, with, with various levels of, 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 of weirdness, uh, levels of uh, uh, maybe disagreement theologically, you know, how you deal with that. Uh, at, you know, in a church setting, you deal with it on a personal level. And it's something that I heard many, many, many years ago. And boy, did it, did it, did it help me. And, you know, today there are people that they will divide over the lowest levels uh, and it'll spin them out. And they don't like, you know, of course, the color of the carpet or the, they don't they don't like a certain program or a program was removed or they don't like a certain focus or I didn't like that teaching. And and uh, and, and, it, and it spins them out and they and, th and there's confusion about, you know, how we can stay unified in that or or if there's a certain type, if there's a manifestation or what if there's what if Joni goes crazy and does three deliverances all at once and people. People are screaming and shouting and, you know, what if that happens and what if that troubles your theology and, you know, and, and you know, on and on. And so I'm going to deal, deal with that and talk about how we can be, how we can take a deep breath and be at peace and where everything that, that uh, maybe we disagree with or that troubles us or whatever d doesn't have to threaten the unity or threaten our peace, you know, we can, we can be okay. And so I'm going to bring that next week. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's something again, like I said, it's really helped me. And I'm like, and there's different, there's different levels. You can categorize things. It's like, okay, there's this, there's this in the church here and they're focusing on this particular thing. And is this, is this at the, the level of, of, of theological heresy well, probably not. Is it just, is, you know, where does it fit in? And then I look and I'm like, oh, it's way down there. It's way down there. Oh, it's not as big a deal as I was making it out to be, right? And, um, and so we can, we can uh, um, agree to disagree and we can still love each other and still stay locked in. And so I think it'll be helpful. So that'll be next week. But uh, I'm going to back up a little bit this week. Um, from where I ended last week, and just to give us a little bit of context, so we're talking about uh, the ecclesia. Some people say ecclesia. I've said it both ways. I'm sticking with ecclesia. I'm just going with that one, um, so I don't sound like I'm confused all the time. I'm sticking with that one. You can do what you want. Um, no division in the church over that. I'll, I'll teach you out, out next next week. What? What does she say? Ecclesia or no ecclesia? But she's, she's a foreigner. That doesn't work. <laughs> she doesn't say most things right, but it's okay. I love Emma. I mean, but uh, no, I mean, I mean, it, I mean, or we don't say things right. Maybe it's her. Maybe she's the one that's right. You have to go with the Scottish. 
Amy, you better stop talking about the Scottish. We're happily married. We love each other. Our love is growing deeper every day. We are on a cruise. <laughs> you, you might not want to do that. If you know my wife, she's like, don't say it, John. Oh, I'm saying it. I'm going there. I've already, I'm already launched out to... So, so we're, we're, we're on, we're, it was our 25th anniversary cruise. It was a lover's cruise to Europe. We make a stop in Scotland. And little did I know that Scottish accent coming out of the voice of a man. She just loves that. I just like, I just could listen to that all day. And I'm like, you do know that I'm standing right here, right? <laughs> I mean, we're down there and there's like, there's like, there's these sailors down there. You know, you get a sailor that's a, Scot a Scottish accent and they're working on the, on the, on the, on the, 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 the you know, the, the docks there. And, and, they, and we're like, hey, could we get some directions? And they're like doing the Scottish accent thing. I can't do it. And I'm not going to do it because I've got to, you know, I'm not. And I'm separating myself from that completely, uh, entirely because of wounding. But, um, but he's like, yeah, you can go over there. And Amy's like, oh, tell me how to go there again. <laughs> Could you, I didn't hear you. Could you repeat those directions? <laughs> she didn't really say that. But, uh, um, yeah, so, so, so this, she loves me still, and she came home with me. You see, she came home with me. She got on the ship with me, not the sailor. And so that'll tell you something right there. It's my accent. Yeah, we need another vacation, don't we? We need to, we need to get out of here. Um, anyway, so yes, yeah, Scottish accents always rule, so that's the message for today. Um, but so, <laughs> ecclesia, that's what I'm going with. And so, um, so I'm backing up a little bit. Let me read this to you, Matthew 16, 18, and 19. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. This is a huge verse right here, and it's a huge truth that a lot of people get mixed up. The, the, you know, they think, wait a minute. Hell is not supposed to be prevailing against me, yet I'm depressed and I'm discouraged and I'm full of this and I'm full of that and I don't know what. Well, that's not what the Bible says. A lack of understanding of ecclesia and of, of, this, of the church has caused us to become, especially as Americans, very individualistic. So, so we interpret scripture through the lens of our independent spirit. Okay, you got to be very careful with that because it's not going to work. We have to take it in context. This is a message specifically, clearly about the church, the ecclesia, the government of God. All right. So again, I'll build my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. It's a corporate entity. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And as the church, not as an individual, as the church, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And so, you, you know, you might ask yourself the question, well, wait a minute, I'm a Christian. So that automatically makes me a part of the church. Well, we got to understand the global church is different than the ecclesia. Okay, same way as a, as a small little Bible study gathering around coffee, you know, at Starbucks or whatever, how, how that is a, that's a, it's a function of the church, right? But it is not the ecclesia. It's not. The ecclesia is the church of the city. It's what we see in scripture all the time where, for example, Paul is addressing the church of Corinth. We see in Revelation, the seven churches based on, based on the city. Okay. So, so. You keep grinning at me. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm like, am I in trouble? I think I'm in trouble. And, and we'll have a talk later, I'm sure. And, uh, and so the church of the city, it's about the church of the city. So it, when we understand the ecclesia and we understand the church of the city, right, 
It's then that the, that the gates of hell will not prevail. That's why I'm so big into this, especially right now, as we're going after revival uh, in Branson. You can, think of, you can think of revivals that have happened like Brownsville. Incredible move of God, and I would pay $10 million if I had it to have another one of those right now. It's that powerful, that incredible. However, it was limited really locally to that to that one church now of course it's spread all over the world but locally it was very interesting that it spreads all over the world but locally it was really for the most part just that one church it wasn't the city church where revival was held uh, that 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 it, that uh, hosted revival it was a locality we were downstairs praying and and, and i and it, you know it just came busting out of me i really want God to move, but I don't want it limited to Revival X. I just don't. I really don't. I'm not saying that as some sort of uh, false humility. I'm just saying I don't. I want it to happen all over Branson. I will not be satisfied. Uh, I'll be momentarily satisfied in the presence of God, of course, but on a grander scale, I will not be satisfied if the move of God does not impact all of the region. Because I know the ecclesia uh, uh, is so critically important. If we see a revival on the level of the ecclesia of the city church, wow, everything changes at that point. Now we are ruling and reigning. Now we are truly governing. Now we are binding and loosing. Now the gates of hell will not prevail. You talk about you talk about a a a a, a powerhouse. That's what Branson will be, and I, I'm believing it will be that. We're going after that. So, so right here we see um, this is Jesus' first mention of the church. The order and government, uh, the order of the church and government were immediately brought to light. When it's correctly structured, the gates of hell cannot prevail, right? Uh, the demonic would not prevail against the the ecclesia demons won't prevail abortion won't prevail debauchery won't prevail we prayed about perversion at the beginning of the service coming against that spirit it will not prevail right and so it's very very important for us uh, to understand that and this, this is huge the keys of authority were removed from principalities and rulers and given to the ecclesia it was giving given to the church Right? So it was given us corporately, right? Very, very important for us to understand that. That's why I tell you, you know, my book, Covens in the Church, all about, all about you know, God's authority, and, and, I'm, and I make mention, and I don't apologize for it, that there are many, many people that are abandoning church and then are just gathering around coffee in their living rooms, presuming that that is sufficient. It's nice, or it might be nice. Sometimes it's very much a movement of rebellion, but sometimes it's nice, but it's not, it's not the ecclesia. It's not going to get the job done. The keys of authority were not given to that gathering. It's given to the church, okay? And again, the church, you know, I, I think this, this, this really eliminates the, the, the uh, so much of the, the pride and, and the control, you know, that's out there and a lot of pastors and, and it's my church and I'm building my church and I'm just focused on my thing. It eliminates that. And it's not about me. It's not about Revival X. It's not, a, it's not about that. It is about the church of the region. It is about the church uh, of Branson. Um, I'm going to read this. Whoops. I'm going to read this to you. I read it last week. I just read it again and it's so good. Rayma Trailer or Trainer said this: God will have His authority structure. God is wanting to bring reform to the church. God wants to change our hearts and He wants to change our ways. We are learning how to take regions. Again, this is the big point. We're learning to take regions, but regional transformation is going to depend on a corporate governmental authority that knows how to operate in the spiritual realm. It's what we've been training around here for a long time, the school of revival and just, just the day-to-day -day training on how to rule and how to reign uh, uh, in the right way. And it's what she's talking about here. Um, we're not there in any sort of collective sense. There's a few that understand, but God is wanting to bring us to do this corporately. God is expanding his wisdom. Regional transformation requires regional governmental authority. Um, I firmly believe, some people don't, um, I firmly believe that there will be apostles over cities, 
I've seen it happen. I've seen it in action. Uh, it's very, very powerful when done right. Uh, um, and usually the apostles of the city wouldn't even acknowledge that they are an apostle. They're just doing the stuff. And people look at it, that person right there or those people or this group of apostolic people, they're really, uh, they're really mo- they're movers and shakers. And they're, they're, they're coming against the forces of darkness and they're advancing the kingdom of God in the city. And I believe we're going to see that here in Branson. Um, I don't know who. God's going to start to raise some people up. We're praying that that happens, and they'll just move, we'll move into position and watch them lead. It'll be amazing. Um, God is expanding his wisdom. Regional transformation requires regional governmental authority. Our metron, which I spoke about that, which is our sphere of authority, our metron is our jurisdiction. It's how we are recognized in our authority. Rulers in cities have authority over people in their jurisdiction. The assignment of the ecclesia is to be planted in that territory. The rulers that have been exercising their power in that place will not be able to withstand the ecclesia that has been planted there. To operate in this authority, we must come out of this out of the system that has been under the authority of demon rulers. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why, you know, what Joni's been doing is so powerful, is we're just we're 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 severing alliances with demons and demonic strongholds and principal and all that. And we must allow the Lord, uh, the spirit of the Lord to judge us before we enact judgment on the region. While there's a legal right, you cannot displace the demonic. So if you have an alliance with the demonic, for example, if you're into pornography, you cannot pray um, against the spirit of pornography in, in a region or a spirit of lust or a sexual spirit. You can't do that. You have no authority to do that. Um, so the legal right has to be removed, okay? Um, this is why rebellion and independent spirit, pride, etc., absolutely can have no place in the, in the ecclesia. All right, let's continue on here. It's so important that we give ourselves to the primary mission. This is for every believer, every Christian. To the primary mission, to the city, to revival and what the Spirit of God is doing regionally. Uh, we can't get distracted. Um, you know, again, for, I, I was sharing downstairs, this concept that I'm bringing to you, for some of you, sounds very new and very different. It's not new at all. Uh, uh, it's, it's just not common for whatever reason here in Branson. I've never heard it here in Branson, the idea of the city church, the idea of the ecclesia. Very, very common in different places that I've been. They get it. They understand it. Detroit got it. Colorado Springs got it. But I think maybe it's a southern thing. I don't know. But it's 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 very much an individualistic family kind of gathering. Let's get together and let's have Jesus do some things and let's worship Him and kind of let's just do that together every week. And that's church. And the idea of the church governing the church, uh, the church making holy, righteous judgments and all that means is we just come into agreement with what the Lord is saying and we pray, we intercede, we decree, we release that. Um, the idea of the church doing that or, the, or prophetically what's the Lord saying and then we, we speak that. It's not common. It's not common here in Branson um, at, at all and it's not common, I think, in all, maybe this whole general part of the nation. Um, so we need to make sure that we are not distracted. We cannot allow the cares of life to get us, the monsters that they are, the cares of life. We cannot allow that to happen. If things are spinning us out, Man, we gotta run, don't run away. Run, clo- run to the altar. Run to a friend. Get some prayer. Power through. Get healed and, and and carry on. But we can't get distracted. We can't allow our emotions to rule us or derail us. All of us. And again, I was speaking downstairs during prayer. God's. This is a season of assignment. We have been given assignments, every one of us. Um, God is speaking into us assignments of intercession, assignments of, of ruling and reigning, assignments of, of, of uh, you know, corporately doing what we're doing, assignments of pursuing revival, and there's different things he's called us to do. But all of us are in a place right now where we have in, in, very important uh, assignments. So radical surrender to what Christ is doing in the end of the age is the mission For all of us, this is critical. If you don't have vision, and I've met a lot of people like that, a lot of people, all of us are there at one time or another, but you don't have vision, you aren't seeing, you aren't captivated by the big picture, you aren't captivated by something bigger than yourself. You know, God 
uh, for whatever reason, he's not infusing you, right, with, with, with passion uh, uh, for, 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 the, for the bigger picture, for the city, for revival, for all that kind of stuff. It's critical that you stick close to those who do. Doesn't mean you're a bad person at all. Doesn't, doesn't mean you're less than. Doesn't mean that at all. It just means that you are in a place of pursuit. You're in a place of learning how to go deep. Many people never heard God's voice. They don't know what it is to have a vision. They don't know what it is to have dreams and visions. They don't get any of that at all. Um, And others are still in a place of growing in that. Others are in a wilderness. You ever been there? It's like, God, talk. Right, talk to say anything. Anything in the whole wide world. Say it. And he doesn't. Why? Why? Because those are the times where you really learn to go deep in the Lord, right? You really learn to be stretched, to grow in faith, to trust him, to get into the word, right? So there's all types of seasons and reasons why we might not uh, be just captivated by the big vision of revival uh, and and the ecclesia and, and, and the gates of hell not prevailing and ruling and reigning and having the keys of authority and binding and loosing and all that kind of stuff. And if you don't have that vision, stay close to somebody that that does because it's contagious. You'll get it. You'll get it. You will, you will, you will, if they are truly walking in the Lord, they're going to go deeper than possibly you've been willing to go. And you're like, oh boy, I want to stay deep. I want to go deep. You know, if I, if that person wasn't in my life, I would shrink back. If those people weren't in my life, I wouldn't run that hard. I would just kind of be surface with this thing. I would just be a little more casual with this thing. I'm telling you what, stay close to people that are burning hotter than you, that are running faster than you, that are more in love with Jesus than you, that, you know, stick close to them because you're going to catch it, right? But it's very important that you do that. Um, you don't want to miss out on what God is doing. That's not a safe place uh, to be. The church, the church, here we go, the church went off the rails and lost its authority when people started attending based on personal experience rather than corporate assignment. This message should be shouted from the rooftops. The family style church really is more about what I'm gonna get out of it, what programs are there for my family, What, what, you know, do I enjoy the worship? Do I, right? And it's not that I don't like to enjoy worship. I do. It's not that I don't want, there's certain things. Of course, we we want some certain things. But the purpose of the church is not personal experience. Again, we're in this American, you know, uh, uh, self-centered kind of, it's not about personal experience. It's about corporate assignment. What are we called to do corporately? The, you know, the easy picture is the military. Nobody ever thought to put together a national military for the sake of giving the soldiers a good time. It's like, you know what? I see all these soldiers out there and I just think they need some togetherness. They need some camaraderie. They need, we can teach them some things, right? So we're gonna, we're gonna make the military and that, that, of course, is nonsense, it's ridiculous, it's ludicrous, that's not how it works. The purpose of the military is not personal experience. The purpose of the military is to annihilate the enemy, is to take dominion, is to advance, right? It's to do that. Exactly the same thing with the church, right? You've heard the church is not supposed to be a cruise ship, it's a battleship, right? So we don't. We don't gather together for the sake of personal experience, though I understand I want a good personal experience. I get that. But that's not the purpose. We gather together because of the mission, because of the assignment. You're not going to be in the United States military and, and have some sort of a bickering and you don't like what the drill sergeant said. He was a little too stern with me. You don't, you, 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 you don't deal with it like that to where now I'm just, I'm leaving the military because they didn't care about me and they didn't love me. And I'm gonna leave and, and, and I've been gone for three weeks now and nobody has come to visit me. Well, if they come to visit you, you're going in the brig. You don't want them to visit you, right? 
And somehow the church, we hear all the language, the church, a mighty weapon in the hands of God, a military force. Yet you've got to be kidding me. You know, people will spin out over, over the fact that somebody doesn't say hi to them or shake their hand when they go through the door. If Chuck doesn't shake your hand when you come through the door, just go find Chuck and shake his hand. Just love on Chuck. Or, or, or you, you, are you hearing me? Man, are we, um, it's embarrassing really what the church has become, but m- more than even just, I'm not even talking about the local. I'm talking about the city church, the ecclesia, you know, how we need, how we need to be running together. Inward focused churches, family style churches, seeker churches, and those focused on personal experience will draw many who would never make a decision to embrace the cross of Christ. See, when, you, when, you, when, when you're in a legit church, you know, more than getting a visitor pack and a coffee mug and a, and a pat on the back and new friends, you're going to be called to die. You're going to be called to surrender. You're going you, you're to be challenged. You're going to be, you're, you're going to, I mean, you're going to feel the heat. I mean, give me a church. And, that, and listen, I want that to be the church of Branson. People start thinking twice about coming to Branson. It's like, I know I'm going to go to Branson, and I'm not going to be able to hide from my apathy. I'm not going to be able to hide from my sin. I'm not going to be able to do that. Everywhere I go, everywhere I look, there's this glory of God, and I'm just not going to be able to hide anymore. I want to see that come to Branson. I really do. This is a key reason why many churches and spiritual leaders in the city, spiritual leaders in the city, will be fierce resistors of revival. My heart was broken um, when, I, uh, when we, we moved to Detroit, you know, and this is not a story about a s- particular place. It ha- this happens everywhere, similar stories. But, uh, you know, when I got there and I was traveling there and speaking and there was legit move of God. I mean, there, God was moving and things were kicking, things were happening. Uh, I mean, very, 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 very powerful stuff. And I was like blown away myself. You know, I would, I, I'll never forget it. Multiple times, multiple times I would be in a service there in Detroit just before we moved there. And there would be people lined up down the middle aisle uh, for hours and I would prophesy over each one of them. And there was a grace on me to prophesy that was, that was not normal. And I was, and people, their eyes were like bugging out. They're like, how are you doing that? I'm like, I don't know. The spirit of the Lord is on me. I'm just, I'm prophesying. Well, God's moving. God's doing incredible things. Uh, you know, there was a particular pastor there, awesome guy. And uh, he was just rocked by God. Um, he testified that his wife had really been distant uh, 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 I don't know right, what the right word is, just really not uh, invigorated in the Lord, I guess, uh, uh, or, or certainly in ministry uh, for a long, long, long time. And he was so thankful, like tears in his eyes, thankful, because uh, his wife just came alive in this season and just, just was just exploding Jesus everywhere. Uh, he went to a hospital uh, room, and there was somebody that was that was literally on her deathbed. She was almost gone, and uh, he went to visit her, and and um, um, he said he said how did he phrase it? He said, uh, "What is it? What is the what is, is is there anything I can pray for? Is is there what is the one thing that 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 I can that that you that that I can help you with? That I can you know what can I do?" And she said, my greatest disappointment, Pastor, are my regrets. My regrets for not allowing God to do what he wanted to do. And he was completely wrecked. And God got a hold of this pastor. And he was was like, I'm not going to have regrets. I'm going to watch God move. I'm going to, well, God's moving and things are happening until... So one, an influential member of his church, I guess they were over the missions department, I think, um, was completely opposed to the prophetic and uh, did not like the way the prophetic was happening. And uh, uh, long story short, it was shut down. It was shut down. And, and it wrecks me, absolutely wrecks me. When I, I, and I've heard stories like this. There's stories like this where, where God wants to move and the power is there and things are happening. But the enemy is very good at what he does. And he tries to get in there and he tries to cause distraction and he tries to derail. He tries to do that. And it very 
often will happen through spiritual leaders. I mean, I'm telling you what, for myself, man, I'm just, I'm just wrecked by God. I'm like, God, please don't ever let me get in the way. And I'm telling him, and I'll tell him right now, if, if I would ever get in the way, just allow me to gracefully resign and go about my life in another way. I don't want to be in the way. I don't want to be that person, but I also don't want to be the one, I, 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 I don't want to be the one that, that, holds back. I don't want to be the one that, that is nervous. I don't want to be the one that just kind of plays it safe. I want to see the fire come. I want to see it come. Rayma Trainer, this is very interesting. She said this. She said, a dominant regional spirit is a false ecclesia. A false ecclesia. Leaders will renounce and defame other leaders who are going to battle in the region. These leaders are threatened and desire to be in first place. People who are promoting self and resistant to God's government are part of the false ecclesia. I think I shared last week how Billy Graham once said, this is a long time ago, that he would never return to Detroit because of the contention among spiritual leaders there. And I don't think he ever did return to Detroit. I saw, that, I saw the same thing happen at uh, the call on 11-11-11, Ford Field, and Lou Engel, and mega prayer uh, uh, conference, and huge, you know, and I watched it happen as local pastors. We, one in particular, we got on the platform in this big, gigantic stadium, and was just absolutely contentious and rebuking and the spirit was so bad and just, just fizzled, just fizzled. It just wrecked my heart. I don't want to see that happen here in Branson. We're not just called to get saved and to huddle around our families. We are called to take territory. The war is very real. The government of the church is fully dependent on Jesus as the cornerstone. This includes his death on the cross, Matthew 16, 21. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed. And on the third day, be raised. And here we go. Peter took him aside. Peter, the church, the rock. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, far be it from you, Lord. This shall never happen to you. We see this spirit in the church today. But he said, he turned, to P, he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. We are seeing this all over the nation in church after church after church. Shutting down the power, shutting down the cross, shutting down the resurrection, shutting down the cost, shutting down the surrender, and simply having nice, happy family gatherings. The government of the church requires embracing the cross of Jesus and our own cross. Peter wanted the comforts and safety of the kingdom, but not the cost, not the surrender, and not the death. The apostles kept waiting for Jesus to establish his kingdom where they could rule by his side, but their understanding was woefully off track. Jesus told his disciples, Matthew 16, 24, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? See, Jesus was shifting focus from self and, and, and personal focuses and even family to the government of his kingdom. He was shifting, right? So we, we, we look at Matthew 12, 46. While he was still speaking to the people, behold, his mothers and his brothers stood outside asking to speak to him. But he replied to the man who told him, who is my mother? Who are my brothers? He's, he's redefining family. Stretching out his hand toward his disciples, he said, here are my, bro my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. He's redefining 
family. Luke 14, 25. Now great crowds accompanied him and he, tur- and, and, uh, he turned and said to them, if anyone comes to me and does not hate, it's crazy, he does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you desiring to build a tower does not uh, first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it. So, of course, we know that he's not saying that we need to demonically hate people. He's not saying that. Of course, we know that. In comparison, however, to how we love God and how we are um, adopting his methods and adopting his truth and adopting his principles, in comparison to that, our love of our family, our wife, our kids, looks a little bit like hate. It's so radically different. So different. So he, he's redefining here. He's like, listen, really, you want to be into family? Now, of course, I love my family. There's something about, there's something about family, of course. Or we promote that. We love family. But, the, but Jesus is saying, listen, you know, let me, ask, let me ask you this question. Let me say, have you ever, you don't have to raise your hand, have you ever seen a family not go hard after God because of one or two members of the family? I see it all the time. You see it all the time, right? And, and, and someone's not on fire for Jesus, and other people are not as determined to go after God. So like, okay, pff, all right, we don't have to go to church. Oh, we don't have to, we don't have to go hardcore for God. Okay, I, know, I see that it's troubling you, and I'm going to just chill out. I'm going to grow a little colder so we can be a little more comfortable as a family unit. And, you know, you, see, you, you really do. You see it all the time. God bless people that have difficult family situations, and they're still burning hot for Jesus. But I've seen it time and time and time and time again that families, especially with a dominant force in the family, whatever they say goes, and the whole family suffers, right? And so Jesus is like, let's redefine this thing. Come on, you need to die to yourself. You need to die to everything. You need to do that. And really, this is our family. We're establishing the kingdom. We're advancing the kingdom. And uh, uh, let's do this together is what he was saying. Luke 14, 33. So therefore, any of you who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. It's incredible. You know, again, with the U.S. military, People sign up to die. I mean, I mean, I mean, it's back in the day, before my time, they were running to get drafted. They were lying about their age to join the military, to, to fight in a war. And nowadays, people can't even show up for church, right? You, you know what I'm saying? And it's not a show up to church message. I'm not, but, but they can't go hard after God. They can't, they can't, they can't lay it all down. They can't surrender all. They can't. Back in the day, something changed in our nation. Something's changed. Something's changed in the church. I mean, let's just be, I mean, just very simple stuff. Again, it's not a church growth message. You know, that's not me. But back in the day, literally, you'd be in the church every time the doors were open, which was many times a week. There was nothing that, there was nothing that, that took precedence. You, you know what I'm saying? And, I mean, it was serious. I've met people. I've known people who have said, like older people, said their entire life they've never missed church. That's insanely amazing, right? Wow, that's incredible. Something's happened, guys. That's why we're talking about the government, right? The ecclesia, the level of commitment, not only, of course, to God's advance in the region, but to God himself. I mean, are you... Just ask yourself this question. Are you willing to die for revival in Branson? Are you willing to die for revival in the nation? Which you realize revival means people going to heaven, not to hell, right? It's not just about having happy meetings. You know, it's a real question. Are we willing to lose everything for the sake of a move of God that transforms lives and sets the captives free? It's a big, big deal. Almost done. See, the call is even greater in God's government. We need to understand that the greatest government on the face of the earth is not the U.S. government. It is the church. You know, I'm not teaching, as some might, I'm not teaching that we're supposed to dominate secular government. I think it'd be great to get some people 
some spirit-filled people in government, but I'm not, I don't believe we're supposed to take over. I don't believe that. I don't, I, I, you know, you can take, there's like dominion theology where you're just supposed to take over the world. I don't, I don't believe that. There's going to come a day when Jesus truly rules and reigns on the earth. Um, so I, I don't believe that we're, the Christians are supposed to overtake the government. But I do believe that the church is supposed to be a government that we are supposed to walk in power, that we're supposed to walk in authority. Because we look to the, you know, we got the, the, the national conventions going on, the Democratic one was what is right now it's going on. And it's really sad to me that people, and they get so horribly animated and violent sometimes and vulgar and hateful and because they have no other hope. Their only hope is, God, is, is earthly government. It's so sad. If we understood the power, the authority of God's government, of the church, wow, everything changes. You know, so what, what does the true ecclesia look like? It's a huge, huge, huge question. I'm just going to give you some fundamentals. First of all, it's foundationally a place of strategic, spirit-filled, nonstop intercession. Everybody's to be an intercessor. That's how we govern. Uh, the Bible says, you know, my house is a house of prayer for all nations. You know, that's fundamentally, foundationally what the church is. It's its supreme identity. It's a house of prayer. Uh, secondly, we get equipped for the mission. It's very specific training. You know, what is the mission? You know, it's, it's very city-focused. Um, and, of course, there's many other things that happen. There's many other things that, you know, you, we could talk about many other things. But foundationally, this is what we're looking at. Um, and then third, most of what we do is city-focused. We legislate as authorities in the ecclesia. We decree and declare and set into motion the plans of God. So we must stay ready. We must be healed and trained and equipped and laser-focused on seeing the kingdom of God advance in the region. And then the, what is the goal? It's revival. Biblical normalcy in a city level. That's what we're going after. Biblically normal life in the city of Branson. I mean, who wants that? Wow, incredible. Stand up. We can't check out, you know, when the challenge increases. All hell is raging right now. You, you all notice that? Man. I mean, who's felt hell raging against you in the last six months? Or six minutes. I mean, <laughs> I mean, hell has raged against me in ways over the last several years of my life, brand new, very different than, than, than previous. And I've had to learn, I'm still learning, I've had to grow. I've had to respond rightly. I've discovered that I am absolutely, um, I'm hopeless unless I go deeper in God. Isn't that interesting? When all hell breaks loose, listen, I think you can relate. When all hell breaks loose, isn't it interesting that our natural inclination is to obey the demon that's messing with us and to pull back? Isn't that interesting? Hell is hitting us threatening us and our, our, unless, unless I'm different than everybody the first reaction I just need to take a break I just need to pull back I need to not go be as intense I need to not go so deep I, has anybody ever done that? please help me is there anybody? it's very interesting to me The enemy's terrified of the ecclesia. He's terrified of a powerful church. He's terrified of you, absolutely terrified of you. And I'll tell you this, I think this is one of the reasons why Jesus was really emphasizing family as opposed to what, not as opposed to, a, a redefinition different than what we know as family. I believe all hell can break loose and we could shrink back and just huddle up with our, with our families. But when we're in 
God's family, there's no such option. Kylette might have a bad day and the enemy's hitting her. Has the enemy ever messed with you? Yeah. And it would be easy, I'm guessing, if she's like me or like the rest of us, I'm just going to huddle back at home. I'm going to lock myself back in home and just kind of hang with a, you know. I'm not picking on you. This is all of us. <laughs> but in a family like we're in now, Joni wouldn't let you do that. Kathy wouldn't let you do that. Amy wouldn't let you, right? Wouldn't let you do that. In a vibrant, healthy ecclesia, and we're part of the ecclesia of Branson, a healthy church, you can't shrink back. Me as a leader, I, I mean, I, sometimes maybe I need to lighten up a little bit, but I'm not going to let you shrink back. I'm not going to stop this thing for the sake of someone having a bad day. I'm going to love you through it, but I'm not going to let the enemy win. You, you, you get what I'm saying? The, the, the advance of the kingdom is happening. We're going to see it happen. And we've got to be smart enough to know that the enemy's terrified of that. Lord, I'm asking tonight. For some people here, this might be not new news at all. Other people, it's very different. I think it's fully biblical. I believe, believe it is. If people struggle with that, they need to come next week. But Lord, I'm asking God that you would help. Help us just have a, just give us a picture, just a picture of the power of the ecclesia, the power of God's government, of your government, a power, Lord, of, of incredible uh, kingdom family. None of us are called to hate our kids or hate our wife, not, but Lord, there's something that you're doing. And you're calling us on a city level, as a city church, to refuse to shrink back. We're an army, we're a military. If we shrink back, we put other people at risk. Sometimes, God, I don't think we think about that, but if we shrink back, and suddenly people we're supposed to be shielding and guarding and loving, they don't have that anymore. I'm just going to ask, you know, if, if there's anyone here, just, just real simple. This is a challenging message. I get that. I get it. I totally get it. I think it's a glorious message. I think it's incredible. I want to see the power that comes as a result of it. But if you, if you have allowed yourself to get taken out, maybe you're taken out now, I don't know, you've, you, emotionally, you're just taken out and you haven't locked in with your fellow, fellow soldiers, just talk to the Lord about that. I believe he wants to heal you. I believe he wants, he, he wants to break the cycle. I think several weeks ago, I, I had that word about breaking cycles. I think that's still on me right now a little bit. Some of you are in cycle after cycle after cycle. It's the same cycle, but over and over and over and over and over again. You get hit, you get hit, you get hit. And your reaction is almost always the same. You have, you, 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 as an example, you have a nice little chat about it with God. God help me, I don't know what's going on. But you don't pull yourself out. You cycle through again. God, I don't know what to do. There's no power in your prayer. There's no strategy in your reaction. You just sit there as a sitting duck knowing that it'll fade away after time and maybe you'll be better next week. And, and then the enemy hits again and the enemy hits again. Those cycles have got to be broken. And I'm telling you right now, those cycles break in the midst of an ecclesia where the gates of hell cannot prevail. That's where the cycles are broken. If you're in a place in your life, and, and I believe, and I believe, I believe a lot of it is just it, there's there's emotional, even mental types of issues, struggles, your mind playing tricks on you, the speaking things to you. 
and you just, you don't know how to break out of this. Some of you get very triggered and you don't know how to break out of that. Is there a deeper conversation to have? Yeah, is there deliverance maybe? Yeah, I'm talking about right now. You are so done and you wanna break out of those cycles and you're, you, you're emotionally just drained and you've got to stop it. You've got to stop it. If that's you, and it's time to break out of the cycles, and I think some of you, it's been for decades. I just need you to come up here and find a place to pray. Just do it real quick. Don't wait around. I don't have any greater revelation than that. This is, this is it. This is it. And I just want you to just find a place to pray. All you're saying is, God, I am just t so tired of the cycles. I'm tired of getting taken out. And I'm gonna pray, I'm gonna pray. I'm gonna pray in Jesus' name, and I'm praying right now. Come on, everyone, just pray. In the name of Jesus, I declare that they are not only talking to you about struggles right now, but they are stepping into, uh, in a greater way, into the ecclesia. I'm not talking about a greater commitment to Revival X. That is the furthest thing that I'm talking about. I'm talking about their identity uh, 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 in the city church, their identity in a, in a mighty end time army. They're stepping deeper into that, not running from it, stepping deeper into that. And I declare the gates of hell shall not prevail. And I command these cycles to break. Come on, everybody, I'm telling you, every one of us have authority, corporate authority, as we are praying together, way stronger than just me. This is not just me. In fact, um, I'm going to ask some people to get up here and to pray. I need, uh, uh, Amy, I need you to pray. Uh, Carmen, I, could you pray? Kylette, could you pray? Just get in line up here. And I just want you to pray, breaking these cycles off. And we're agreeing together as a people. We are breaking cycles off. And we're breaking people into freedom. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. And then uh, close it up, Joni, after uh, whoever was last. Yes, God, and so we just come into agreement and we say freedom. We declare freedom over everyone up here in Jesus' name. I just pray that cycles that have repeated for some of them for decades, that those would end tonight in Jesus' name and they would step forth into freedom and fullness, Lord. I just thank you that these things that have plagued them, they have no right in their lives anymore, that they are shutting that door, that they are breaking alignment with the enemy and they are walking walking forward into the plan and the purpose that you have for them. And we as family come along beside them. We as their comrades come along beside them and we fight for them and we put our shields around them. And Lord, so we just declare right now tonight, they will be free in Jesus name. Lord, we pray against anxiety. We pray against an anxious heart. We pray against an anxious mind, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can just stand firm and be bold and stand on your word and come in agreement with what you say. Enough is enough. And we say, Satan, just go. We're not going to stand for any of your lies anymore, Satan. Jesus, open our eyes expose the lies of the enemy on us, expose it. And uh, like Amy prayed, whatever we've come in partnership with, I break it, we break that, we break that. And I just pray that you would help us to clearly see what it is every time, every time it's that cycle that comes up again. You're like, oh, it's that. I break that in the name of Jesus. And I claim this over that. Uh, in your name, Lord Jesus, and by your blood, we thank you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I lose discernment. Lord, lose discernment to us to recognize these cycles when the enemy tries to attack. Lose that discernment so we immediately step out and break that in Jesus' name. And Father, I just pray that doors are closed on these cycles. In the Jesus' name, close these doors on the cycles. Let, that no one may enter, cover them with the blood, cover them with the blood, seal them with the blood of Jesus. 
And Holy Spirit, I just pray that you teach us, teach all of us how to fight against this. And let, put in us a knowing that we have a family here that will hold us accountable and raise us up in the times that we may be low. Let it, that let help us to recognize it in each other that when somebody is going through a hard time, God, give us discernment to recognize it and see it in them so that we can reach out with a hand and say, yes, here, let me help you. Let me hold you up. Let us show us how we can hold each other's arms up in the battle. In the name of Jesus, thank you, God. Thank you, God. While John was speaking, I felt like the Lord gave me a word in first, uh, first Peter and then in Psalms. And it was, but you are God's chosen treasure, priest who are kings, a spiritual nation set apart as God's devoted ones. And then in Psalms it says, worship him wearing the glory garments of your holy priestly calling. When you are not operating in your holy priestly calling, executing the authority you have, it is dishonoring to him. So I break the lie the enemy has spoken over you on your identity in Jesus' name. And I call you forth to step in to your holy priestly calling and to walk in the authority you have been given in Christ in Jesus' name. Come on, everybody. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna sing. We're going to declare victory. And man, I just, I'm just, I, I just know the spirit of God is moving and he's on something. Lord, we pray tonight, God, for freedom, absolute, complete, entire, I mean, all the, all the way. Freedom, God, we love you. You paid the price. Nothing else has to be done, God. You did it all. Come on, how about a shout, everybody? Come on. Come on, woo!